for the Scarlet Knights from Rutgers. Number 30, a senior, 6'2", from Queens, New York, Rich Brunson. For some reason, that round ball is addictive, you know? <laughs> that bounce, man, when you hear that, you know, you, you sit up. So that's been a part of my life forever. My name is Rich Brunson, native of Jamaica, Queens, New York. Head coach at Brookdale Women's Basketball, former Rutgers University point guard, and my journey starts in the streets of New York City. Started out in high school. I played for a school called Hillcrest. Didn't really have a big sports program, but basketball was key for them. All my best friends I grew up with, they all went to the former school of Andrew Jackson, the school of Bob Cousy, who played in the NBA. So uh, my older brother, who was a basketball phenom, said, listen, you need to make your own name. So you need to go to a Hillcrest, it's a brand new school. I went there, I played there. So I'm like, yeah, well, my friends are going to Jackson. So I wound up going to Hillcrest and everybody said, listen, you're only young, no veterans ever make the varsity team. So you have to play on the JV team. Lo and behold, I made the varsity team as a freshman. And as my sophomore year, everything took off. Started getting better and was introduced to a guy by the name of Howie Garfinkel, who ran a five-star basketball camp. Camp was phenomenal. It was probably the first time in my career where I was kind of nervous playing against guys from all over the country who were good. Rocket Rod Forster from UCLA, Dominique Wilkins, Antoine Carr, uh, Roosevelt Bowie, Sam Bowie. But I held my own and I uh, got a chance to meet a guy by the name of Art Perry who's at UConn. And he followed me all over camp every day. But back then, those coaches weren't allowed to talk to you. But they'll give you a little wink here and there and throw the card to you. So Art Perry was my guy. So what happened was he uh, was an assistant coach at UConn. UConn letters was coming all every day through the mail. That was going to be my school. But at the very last minute, here comes Rutgers. And Coach Perry had switched school. And I said, well, what happened to UConn? He said, listen, a good friend of mine is Tom Young from the D.C. area. He had the position and uh, he want me on board. I didn't even know where Rutgers was because New York people usually stay in New York. I said, I heard of St. John's because St. John's was actually one of the schools that I started as maybe 12 years old where I went to summer camps and got the opportunity to meet the legendary Lou Conaseca. So Lou followed me through my whole high school career. So it was time for me to select my school. That's when Louis stepped in and said, hey, come to my office, we gotta talk. And that was probably the most nervous time of my life. I went in that office and he had that big old Godfather chair sitting in there with the feathers around the chair. And he came in, he grabbed my cheeks and he smacked me with the face like this. He said, hey, you ready to sign? And I'm shaking like a leaf. And I said, so I got bad news, Lou. He said, what is it? I said, I'm gonna go to Rutgers. And he looked at me. He said, in, the, in that Italian voice, you're gonna be good. You're gonna be good, kid. You're gonna be good. So now that I make my way to Rutgers, all American this coming out of New York City, all Queens. And my first week playing on the on the banks, I wasn't getting no playing time. And, and I didn't know. But being a New York kid, you're cocky. You're like, hey, wait a minute. All my friends are calling me. Hey, what's going on with you down in Jersey? That's cool. They ain't playing you. Do they know who you are? I'm like, I know, I'm not playing. So I contacted Louie. I didn't know how, to, how everything worked. And Louie said, what's going on? I said, I think I want to transfer. He said, what are you talking about, Richie? No, you stay there. The next day in practice, Coach Young came to me. I was shooting in the corner. i never forget this. And he said, are you OK? I said, what do you mean, Coach? He said, no, you said, like you're kind of down the last couple of days in practice. What, are you upset about something, playing time? I said, no, who, me? No. I said, Coach, you got guys on this team who are juniors and seniors who aren't playing. I'm a freshman. I ain't worrying about nothing. I'm good. Well, see me at the practice. Come to the office. I go to his office, and I sat down, and he looked at me. He said, you sure you're okay? I said, Coach, what are you talking about? And then he said those words. I got a call from Connor Seca. <laughs> and I was still. <laughs> you told me you called them. And as a kid, you don't know. It's a fraternity. Coaches talk. You can't steal another player's. You know, I talked to a coach. I didn't know all this. So he said, listen, you're only a freshman. Your time is going to come. You'll be OK. Our relationship 
was honest and sincere. Like he, he, he told me, listen, wait your turn. You're going to be okay. You're going to be great. You're going to be a great combo guard on one, two. And I believed in him. Coach Young was, was, was that kind of guy where he's just, you know, he didn't have really high ups and downs. He was ready in between. And he didn't really get on you a lot. I think maybe one time it was my, my lesson to learn. And I didn't cross that line ever since. Freshman year, and October 15th, first day of uh, workouts. And as I, years went on, I learned, hey, listen, I tell a freshman guy, you better prepare yourself. You better start working out now in the summer before you come to college. Because you, if you don't work out and you start when they tell you to start, you're going to be behind the eight ball. He sent it out to everybody. Okay, we're going to meet in the morning, 6 o'clock at the football field. You're going to meet coach, you're balling over there. You guys going to run a couple miles. And I'm like, uh-oh, my first encounter, college basketball. I wasn't used to the alarm clock. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so I'm waking up. I look at the alarm clock and it said 7 o'clock. I hear a horn blowing. I look through the window of my campus room, but it's Kelvin Troy, who probably was the only guy on the team that had a car. He had about eight guys in his car. He's all hanging out the window, Darren's good name. He said, man, you in trouble. <laughs> and then he pulled off. I said, what, 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 what happened? You in trouble? I said, oh, man, here we go. And that's the first day of practice. I'm there an hour and a half early. I'm there waiting for everybody. I got my Rutgers gear on. Coach Young coming in with the whistle. Didn't pay me no mind. Went through the whole practice. I'm, I'm doing the drill, looking at him. Doing the drill, looking at him. He hit the whistle, turned around, going. I said, oh, this guy, oh, he probably forgot about that. He, you know, at the end of practice, he goes, come to my office, Rich. And I'm starting shaking. I looked at Kelvin Troy, he goes, I told you you in trouble. <laughs> so I, I sit in his office and coach said, listen, kid, I don't know how you do it back in New York, but here at Rutgers, you gotta be punctual, you gotta be on time. Coach, listen, a long clock, I never had a long clock in New York, I didn't know. He said, ah, it's okay, it's okay. Being a mild man, the coach he was. He said, you're gonna meet coach tomorrow. You got me in tomorrow, so the clock. Meet coach balling. I said, no problem, coach. No problem. Would you believe the exact same thing happened the next day. Would you believe that? Two days in a row? Then I'm there two hours early for practice. And I'm shaking. <laughs> same day, he's whistling out, he didn't say the word. I look at Darius, he's shaking his head. Oh my God, you in trouble now. In a practice, call me, Rich, come to the office. And I get in that office and he's smiling. He said, I don't know. He said, what's wrong with you, kid? I said, coach, I'm so sorry. He said, and this is one of the strangest things that ever happened to me. This is what he said to me. He said, tell me what I should do to you. Nothing. <laughs> I said, I don't know, coach. What kind of question is that? What do you mean? He said, uh, what should I do? What, what, what do we do? So here's my punishment. For the whole week, after practice is over, you have to, you know, you've been the rack, the aisles, the steps. You gotta run up, walk over, down. And when you complete it, come back down and go to the other side, up and down. So that was my, my punishment to run the steps. It took me about maybe a half hour, dead tired. Uh, by the time I finished, I looked down on the court, they rearranged everything because, you know, the nets shared our arena uh, those two years. So the NBA is there getting ready for the game. The Lakers coming in town, whatever. And I see all the guys looking up, waving at me goodbye. Troy and Dad, hey, see you later on campus. So that was my, my eye opener that you have to be punctual. It's, it's, a, it's a change. You have to be willing to take that on. And I think with our young kids today, I don't think this generation understands the demand for a young guy from Jamaica, Queens, who didn't really know anything about New Jersey and just ran across the bridge, if I had to do it all over again, I, I, I'd make the same choice. 
because I had great coaches and those guys treated us like family. So you can't take that away from anybody. Coach Young, you know, he, he was one of those coaches that I, you know, in my coaching career now, when I did high school at Radden Valley College and then I'm at Brookdale, I take pieces from all those guys. I take the mild manners from Joe Boylan. I, I take the eye contact from Coach Young. And I take that sincerity from Coach Perry. All those guys combined makes who I am today, my coaching style. And then uh, I take a little bit from guys who uh, I've been around since they got into their coaching, like Fatino and Calipari at those five-star camps where they just started coaching. You know, I've been around those guys. So it's a blessing for me to still be able to contact those guys. Like I said, I, I train a lot of guys in the New York, New Jersey area, but when the product is right, my job is to steer you to the right coach in the right school. So that's the beauty of, of coaching to me, is just to be able to connect to a kid and let him understand that that round ball doesn't go anywhere. It goes where you take it. So you got to take it to the gym, take it to your garage, take it to your backyard, and, and just work on it. So, And the sky is always the limit. Brunson's here with us. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. It was a tough ball game, and it, it looked like for a long time Southwestern Louisiana sat in that zone and really made it very difficult for you. It did. Uh, they had a uh, size advantage over us, but uh, like Coach said before the game, we went our offense well and uh, rebound, then we, uh, we'd be in good shape. I don't know that we took two or three bad shots all night long, and that comes with experience. Mm -hmm. Tommy, I'd love to talk to you more. I know it's a great win for you, and I'm sure you're going to celebrate appropriately, and I look forward to seeing you Sunday. Thanks, Bill. I enjoyed it.